Wilma, what can you tell us about this uh, first case in Dark County of confirmed uh, COVID-19? This is our first case. It came to us as an individual being tested last week. Uh, we got the call at about 3.15 this morning that we had the positive case. Uh, he's identified as a 20-something male uh, with uh, uh, no specific here history of where he contacted it at. So it's a communal communication or a contact case and we're proceeding accordingly. So we don't know for sure, because uh, I, I believe in the release it said he had just gotten back from a trip from Florida. So we're not sure if it was in Florida or if it was here when he uh, contracted. Uh, he became sick upon his return from Florida. Okay. So. Uh, when did when did he get back? Do we know that like approximate timeline? Thursday, so. uh, Monday. Yes, March 9th. March 9th, he got back yeah. and uh, tested. Pop, he was tested last week, so a little bit after that. He got back Monday, tested Thursday, and then test results early this morning. Okay. Uh, do we know kind of his condition, symptoms? You know, because obviously we hear people in their 20s. You know, might not get it as severely as people that are older. Do we have any details on on that? Mm -hmm. Do you want to describe? He basically, he shows some mild symptoms and so forth. Uh, coughing, some upper respiratory. Uh, he feels that basically he's in pretty good shape, but he was concerned enough to be tested, which is uh, what we like. He tested negative for the influenzas, and then they sent in the test for the coronavirus. Doctor, do you know how he arrived back home? Do you know if he do, it, do we know whether or not he flew home or did he drive or he did fly. And has that airline been contacted about his That is in the works. We're working with the patient um, to get information as far as what airline and where he was at on the airplane. Is there any possibility that other people may have been affected depending on how close they were to him? I can't comment on that at this time. How about you, Doctor? That's, it's under investigation at this point. We're investigating all of his contacts. Um, he had to, did have some travel companions, I believe, and we have those under quarantine right now for observation. Any words of advice for people traveling from, like in his case, Florida, possibly the Bahamas even, to get tested if they haven't done so already? Um, we really don't get into testing asymptomatic or people that don't have any symptoms. Uh, they need basically to be screened. Uh, the coronavirus will have a fever, uh, influenza-like illnesses, so it can be kind of confusing with influenza. Influenza typically doesn't have a temperature with it. Uh, coronavirus does. You'll have some uh, coughing, maybe some sore throat, and you'll have some chest tightness or difficulty breathing which the difficulty breathing is one of those things you don't usually see too much with influenza. Uh, but, you know, um, young people, you usually get just mild symptoms, uh, but that may not be everyone uh, because predominantly most of the individuals that come down with Corona and have severe cases are in the elderly, 50 and over. Uh, but there are, like this, there are several cases that are less, you know, have younger you, in age. Have you had a chance personally to talk with this individual? No, I've left that up to my mm -hmm. nursing staff to do that. And we've we've been in contact, well, we've tried to be in contact with him daily, but we've had mm -hmm. several days where we couldn't catch up with him. And this was before the test came back, so. Any idea on how long he will be isolated, whether it's five days, 10 days, 15 days? He'll be a minimum of 14 days isolated. As if he's got if there's other occupants in the home, they will also be isolated for the same time period, and maybe longer if they develop symptoms sometime along the way. In the home, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. <laughs> um, but if there's anybody else in the home, they will uh, be under observation during this same time, and if they develop any symptoms, they will be 14 days beyond when they started to show symptoms. Uh, and such, um, you know, we'll have contact with them every day during their isolation. So it's a matter of uh, keeping track of them, making sure that they stay home 
that they don't violate the quarantine. Um, and can, can you walk us through on how this was reported to the Dark County Health Department? Uh, laboratories are required to report positive tests to the health department uh, when they receive a positive or when they get the results. We'll get them back positive or negative and then we're required to report that to the state health department and then we go to work and start investigating the contacts and histories and try to catch up with everybody that they've been in contact since they showed symptoms. Should individuals be afraid to do this procedure? To be tested? Yes. No, it, it's, it's, a, it's a nasal swab. Uh, it, it'll be definitely be uncomfortable to do, uh, but you can do a, a nasal swab or an oral pharynx swab or some sputum. There's three types of things that normally uh, are involved in that. Uh, uh, currently, they can combine the oral and the nasal into one container and just utilize one test instead of two tests. The preferred test is the uh, nasal test, but they will do either one or both. It's but it's go ahead, I'm sorry. And, then the, and those swabs are then put in some viral media and sent off to a lab. Uh, there are several private labs that do it, and then there's the Ohio Department of Health. I believe uh, the Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, both test now, um, and there's a couple others. That, uh, so did your office have to report this to the CDC? Uh, the state health department usually does that. We report to the state, the state will report to CDC. And to the best of your knowledge, doctor, is this the youngest person that's contracted this uh, disease? No, there's uh, a 14 year old, I believe. Not, and I couldn't tell you what sex in the mm -hmm. state he's from, but 14 to, I believe, 80, 81, I believe. 81 is the range as of yesterday now. Um, those stats will be updated by the Department of Health here over the next hour or two. Do we know if anybody else in Dark County is currently being tested for uh, the coronavirus? I believe we have what, two. We have a few. We have a couple still pending yet. Okay. Uh, we've had several negatives already, but one positive and a couple pending yet. Did it surprise, I mean, we talk about normally this is affecting older people. Did it surprise you at all that the first confirmed case here in Dark County with somebody on the younger end of the spectrum rather than maybe a, a, an older person? Surprise, no. Uh, in this case, it's relatively, I won't say it's really mild because I don't know the overall condition of him, but it is, appears to be on the milder side. Uh, you would expect the th those, the ones to be the carrier or asymptomatic, but um, it's the coronavirus is unknown enough where you really can't predict just how it's going to affect any individual. But uh, there are a percentage of individuals that actually get the virus and show no symptoms at all. And those are the ones that are probably more actively spread it than those that actually come down with it because you do, it's an unknown case that you don't isolate necessarily. Are there any additional precautions being taken by first responders in Dark County because of this? I know listening in, there has been uh, calls where respiratory precautions are indicated. Is that going to increase in volume or do you think? I think most of the procedures that EMS and so forth and dispatch are screening and so forth are already currently in place because we've talked about this over the past couple of weeks, how they look at this, because you never know when the first one's going to be and you don't want to have several of these under your belt before you actually change your procedures. You want to be preemptive and not reactive. So we've been sort of preemptive here over the last several weeks on how we look at things and how we're trying to address things. Are there anything, you know, uh, kind of going off of that that the, the department is doing with you know, people, their businesses, or, you know, anything in within the community of, you know, some of the guidelines and, and steps that are in place for people that are still out and about and things like that? Basically, we're still following all of the High Department of Health and CDC's guidelines. Uh, we really haven't modified those. Uh, I'm going to overly emphasize, since we've got this first case, that we pay more attention to those, that we restrict our movements. Uh, and only go out and about when necessary. 
The grocery stores are going to remain open. Uh, a lot of the restaurants are doing carry out or delivery now. We don't want any in-house service uh, as far as that goes because we don't want people to congregate. Uh, we currently have uh, a 50 person limit in the state. Uh, the president announced yesterday he wants it to see 10. So we're waiting to see later this afternoon, see whether the governor and Dr. Acton are going to reduce that to 10 also. Um, because this, what a lot of what we're seeing now is community spread, which means it goes from person to person and not necessarily just traveling to a country that's heavily infected. Um, so, so we're looking at that and making a recommendation that we pay more attention to that. Um, some offices are going to be open for what I want to call it as needed or something that's really needed. And if you do, if it's something that can be postponed or waited for a, a while or extended period of time, that you just wait and do that at a later date. Um, we've declared a public health emergency in this county, but that really doesn't change anything. That's, I mean, the feds, the state have, come, have declared a public health emergency. A variety of counties around the state have declared it. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to shut anything down or change anything as the way we've been doing them right now. Because we've been, uh, Dr. Acton has been fairly uh, proactive in her program trying to take that sudden peak, unmitigated peak versus mitigation. I think most people have seen the difference between the two. The low mitigation or the mitigation with a low peak is more of a preemptive. It does prolong it, but it also I think preserves more lives in the long run and it also uh, relieves the burden on public health because if you can't if you can't treat your patients uh, your mortality is going to increase um, doctor what about when individuals choose to come to your office are you asking people if they don't need to don't come to your office uh, that's correct if, if we if it's something we can do over the phone or if industry or anybody, uh, we've got some stuff that we're working from home to. Uh, we've got, we've kind of eliminated face-to-face -face contact with our, what we call infant visitation, home visitation, and early intervention programs, which we work with young uh, kids at risk, zero to three, um, to try and keep them healthy. Uh, the state has shut down the nursing homes or extended long care facilities, rightly so, because most of those are elderly people. And we look at the percentage of elderly has a 15% mortality versus an overall 2%. That elderly escalates as it goes up with age, and that 15% is just an average. So uh, we are kind of emphasizing that long-term care, try and keep things in their facility as much as possible, but if it needs to go to the hospital, it needs to go to the hospital. Uh, and then uh, somebody that's on hospice or end of life, definitely there's conditions that change there in those facilities. Um, the Ys uh, and those kind of facilities are closed down for the most part. Daycare is still open. That's sort of an essential service for the most part right now. Uh, but that may change. Uh, we've had one four-year-old test, but that tested, but that was negative. So we haven't seen anything in the real young yet, as far as that goes, even around here. Are you advising your staff when it po when it when it's possible for them to work out of home? Uh, if we can do something out of home, environmental is a lot of code enforcement, so that's something that we really can't do at home. But we are putting certain things there sort of on the back burner that, that aren't really necessary. We're going to try and minimize face-to-face -face contact with even within the field work. Uh, like I said, the Help Me Grow program, which is the home visitation and, er, visitation and early intervention, uh, we've kind of eliminated face-to-face -face unless something really becomes necessary. We have a medically shortage area in Dark County or we're considered slightly underserved and most of my staff that does the Help Me Grow program, I have nurses for that particular reason so that I can get some sort of professional people in.
for the high risk, the higher risk population of infants and young yeah, children. That, that leads me to my next question, if you don't mind. Um, are there your nurses, doc, other doctors here, doing anything to cautionary measures to protect themselves? Um, we don't have any doctors. We don't. The only clinic we run is immunization clinic, and we do that on Tuesdays. And uh, we canceled that today for a variety of reasons. Uh, and that is sort of a medically essentially service. Vaccines are very important. Uh, there's a lot of uh, vaccine myths out there for reasons not to do it. Uh, we did a TDAP clinic last Saturday where we brought in a lot of seventh and eighth and or to be seventh and twelfth graders or to be seventh and twelfth graders so that they can get those immunizations because some of the after effects if they get that disease can be rather de devastating if not life threatening. What about daycare centers as well? Daycare centers, uh, that's, that's on the table. I mean, Dr. Acton at the state is still looking at that. Um, I don't want to close them down right away, but if we get into uh, um, uh, more cases of uh, the COVID-19, that could become a reality at that point, uh, as is shutting down a lot of other things. Um, I want to emphasize that I don't want people to go crazy and hoard stuff because we're not in that kind of danger. Coronavirus is a new virus. It's going to spread. It's not going to stop until it makes its natural evolution through the population. Uh, basically, there's a thing called population or herd immunity where you have to reach like 70 to 80 percent protection in those before it becomes under control in the population. Uh, and that's what this is going to do for the most part if it acts like most other uh, bacterial or viral infections, viral infections do. And hopefully that it'll be a more of a long-term immunity instead of a short immunity that's going to continually recycle. Uh, but that yet has yet to be seen. What's the best way for Dark County residents to contact your health department, be it through the phone, or would you prefer the website if they have questions? Um, I have limited staff. I would prefer they use the ODH, 8334-ASK-ODH uh, uh, call line. We do have on our system, there's option five right off, shortly right off the introductory line that will take you to uh, a couple nurses that are to answer the COVID questions, so you don't have to listen to the whole thing, but I've got uh, uh, an option that takes you to one of two nurses or another station after that if they're those two are busy. So we do have uh, a hotline that uh, is de dedicated to it if you choose that option on our menu. You talked about how Dark County's a little bit underserved uh, in terms of like hospitals and things like that for the population and it's a smaller staff you know here do you have any concerns like if this were to spread about you know the, obviously the, the whole point is to avoid overwhelming you know the, the hospitals but you know do you have a concern just based on the, those kinds of numbers or? well we actually have a hospital Wayne Hospital it's a privately owned hospital uh, that's continually expanding and making agreements with Premier and some other um, agencies to expand and provide more and more services within Dark County. So we have a hospital, it's the doctors, if you look at the numbers per 10,000 population or 1,000 population, however you want to look at it, we're slightly underserved with that. You'll see um, our mental health across this section, not just Dark County, but a lot of counties is uh, underserved. and. I, there is a lot of need for the mental health part of it, and this type of situation brings out a, a greater need for mental health services. Uh, recovery and wellness has been expanding over the last couple of years with the drug problems. Uh, the Tri-County Board, um, um, Wayne Hospital has added a few things. Uh, family Health has added some things, and Family Health is our FQHA, or Fairly Qualified Health Center. Um, and they've expanded in quite a few areas to help serve the area. But uh, numbers-wise, we're still considered a shortage area as far as the state is concerned. 
Words of encouragement for your staff. You keep doing a great job. Uh, the staff, my staff is a wonderful staff. I commend them on what they do uh, for day to day. Uh, some days can go great, other days can be tough. And this is just the beginning of probably some tougher times right now because this is just the beginning. It was going to come around, it's going to go through the state, and, and we're just in the early stages of it. It'll probably, well, I'd be surprised if it doesn't hit every county. Uh, I think West Virginia is lucky if they don't have any, but they're the only state that's reporting not having any right now. Uh, might want to dispute that, but, <laughs> but it's, it's going to go through, and until the, the, the mean population gets some immunity to it, it's going to keep spreading. If we look at what influenza does every year, if we look at West Nile, what happened several years ago, uh, the swine flu, uh, the avian flu before that, we have these sort of, they don't get listed as a pandemic, but every so many years we have these things actually go through. Uh, there's, if you want to call this politicized, uh, there is a lot of, in my mind, this was that really politicized a lot and makes it seem a lot worse. But if we look at the influenza, like we get an average about, I think what the figures were this year is we had 29 million cases of it, over 310 hospitalizations, 150 infant de or pediatric deaths. And, and we're still not through this year's flu season yet. And let's well, see, population-wise, we'll have 20 to 40,000 depending on a year, and we're 19,000 or something like that this year. So, and we're not there even near that yet, but uh, like I said, we're just getting a good start on this. Doctor, and it's gonna go for a while. If you could talk to this individual that came back from Miami just three days ago, should we get plotted for coming forward the way you did and not waiting until it really got bad? Well, We've had a few setbacks with this case as far as trying to get him early. Uh, we have to deal with a few things that probably didn't go ideally, so we've got to do a little bit of uh, contract tra contact tracing. Uh, some of our initial information seemed to be pretty good, but in renegotiating, re-talking through some of this, I think we found a few more things that we have to look at and go through yet so i'm not gonna while we're under investigation we're gonna leave that alone can, can we go through the process again I, I don't think it can be said enough about what individuals should do to make sure that they wash their hands when they cough cough into their sleeve so forth. yeah when if if you cough sneeze either one uh do that into your sleeve don't do what i did and basically turn to her and do it <laughs> uh that you know, half of it was right and the other half was dead wrong. Uh, but you want to do that. You want to wash your hands frequently. Soap and water does an excellent job of cleaning and sanitizing and, and killing the virus. So you don't need hand sanitizer or anything else. Uh, the alcohol content in that may dry out your hands if you use it too much, but soap and water does just fine overall. Uh, most of your common disinfectant chemicals will uh, effectively uh, eliminate the virus. Uh, there's no set time as far as how long uh, the virus will remain in the environment. Uh, different, different medias, different substances can go like for a couple hours to maybe nine days or even longer. So it's like this is a new virus and there's a lot that we don't know about it yet and it's to be discovered. Um, isolation distance, social distance, what we call social distancing is, uh, I mean, the president last night said 10 people in any one group. Ohio is currently at 50. Some other places may be at 100. Uh, but the biggest thing is, is keep your group small. 50 to 100 is probably a bit too big in my mind. Um, Make sure that if you are showing symptoms of illness, 
no matter what the illness, you really should stay home. Your employers need to support that. Employers that allow sick people to come to work and stay to work take the risk of infecting a lot more employees to the point where they might even have to close their business down. It would definitely have, could affect their production depending on their size. So, and one of the other concerns is, you know, I can't afford to go home and stay, but there are some things in the works like unemployment compensation that can be brought about to pay for these uh, circumstances uh, to help these people stay home, which they really need to because they're not doing anybody any favors by going to work sick. And doctor, one more time for the symptoms again. I know they're short. The symptoms are fever, and that's the big, one of the big difference between influenza and coronavirus. Uh, aches, body aches, uh, headaches, uh, sore throat, sneezing, coughing, and the other thing that's more specific is tightness of the chest or pneumonia, like symptoms where you have difficulty breathing. Anything else on that? Cough. Yeah, I guess I'd cough. Would it be an intermittent cough or a consistent cough? Uh, it's more of a dry cough, I believe, mm -hmm. for coronavirus. I mean, you can have what we call mo wet coughs or moist coughs or dry coughs. Dry coughs are more irritating, which is why you could get a sore throat. You tend to get more more sore throats out of it than influenza. Uh, and if it's deep in your lungs, you're not coughing up. Uh, fluids and like you would if it's in the upper your bronchioles or upper airways. I don't know. Do we get any other well I was just say was there anything we didn't well you have everyone's name on the well, I mean uh, okay. Okay. no we didn't. But uh, I mean is there anything that we didn't touch on, Ginger or Emily that we, um, I will say we have a website, we have talking points, we have other things on our website. Uh, check those daily. ODH and CDC both have, uh, um, I'm gonna call it guidelines. Uh, ODH basically works off of CDC's guidelines. They may modify them a little bit. We may modify either one or both of those. But we don't typically, well we won't be less than what either one of those are. Um, if, because if I, I, we've got the first case, I may institute some things before some other counties do as far as that goes. So there's a, you know, and the local public health agency has primary jurisdiction over their area. The Dark County General Health District is a combined health district. We do Greenville City and the, the entire county of Dark. Um, so. So I'll just add that the health department does not test or diagnose for COVID-19. So individuals really need to talk to their health care provider. We do not want them to go to the emergency room unless it's absolutely necessary at this point. And to be tested, you have to have a doctor's order or prescription to be tested. And I guess I'll promote Montgomery County's thing today at UD Arena parking lot where they're actually doing mobile COVID-19 tests from what, 10 to 6, I believe it is. Uh, so. Do you foresee that kind of testing coming to Dark County for those who can't make it to Montgomery County? Um, I won't rule it out, let's put it that way. But it's, it's something that, you know, you have to have the mechanism to be able to do that. We don't really have that right now, but I think there's a company that's doing it for Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. And so I foresee that it's a, that is a possibility of other uh, areas and not just Montgomery County. You said that you have to have an order from your physician to get the testing done. Where will the testing be taking place here in Dark County for the residents? Will it be taking place at the hospital? Or is it something they can draw, say, in the office themselves or collect at the office? Right now, um, it's the physician's offices and or the hospital. The hospital wants to primarily, okay, let me back up. Your first avenue is through your physician and physician's orders and before you come in to be tested, you should be calling ahead and they will tell you when and where they'll want you to come and normally you'll be asked to wear a mask to come in if you're showing signs and symptoms. We've went to the point where 
it's it's not of much use for the general public to wear a mask because most of the masks are not properly fitted and it's more important that the person that's ill wear the mask and the other reason is being there's a PPE shortage the mask is better off on the ill patient than anybody else so that's the other thing we want to emphasize if you are sick uh, you stay in and if you're quarantining in the house and you've got other people in that house and they're sort of isolated but the sick not sick the sick person should be wearing a mask and hopefully confining themselves to one room and not overly exposing the rest of them in the household at the same time because we will quarantine the entire household uh, because they're in close contact but we'd ask it if, if possible they, if they have their own bedroom bathroom that they use exclusively while they're sick and it gets back to also sanitizing everything on a regular basis frequently every hour or two throughout the day uh, for whatever that ill patient contacts within the environment doctor in closing is there anything else you want to mention